Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to talk about how to get your contractor's license, and specifically I want to tell you how to pass that test the very first time. If you've been following my channel, you know that I built my own house, but to do that I didn't actually need a general contracting license. Since I'm the owner and the occupant of the house, I was able to do it myself, and most places are probably going to be like that. You have to check with your local jurisdiction if you're going to do this. but. As you've seen in some of my previous videos, I subdivided 40 acres into six lots and I'm gonna build a spec home on one of those lots. And since I'm not going to move into that house, I have to get my general contracting license to be able to do this. The first thing that you need to do is figure out who's gonna issue your license. Is it the state, the county, the city? Who is it and what are their requirements? Now, most of the time you can go on the website of that particular city or county or wherever it is that issues that license and they'll tell you all of the requirements necessary to get that license. So once you know what the requirements are, then you have to decide which license are you gonna get? And in my state, there are three different ones, a class A, B, and C general contractor's license. So you have to know which one you wanna get. Class A lets you work on basically anything, unlimited stories. Class B lets you work on anything up to three stories, and Class C is residential only up to two stories. Now there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are just gonna go ahead and get that Class A license so that they know that they can basically work on anything. I didn't see the purpose in it. I'm gonna be building a residential house. I have zero desire to build anything other than a residential house, maybe two, I don't know how many it's gonna be, but if somewhere down the line, if I need a different license, I'll get it at the time. Just remember that a class A license is more expensive than a B or a C, so basically the expense goes from A to B to C. The C is the least expensive license, and it's gonna be the least expensive to insure as well. So to get your license, obviously you're gonna to have to read whatever the requirements are for your jurisdiction. And so for me, I have to have a business, has to be an actual business, and it has to have a tax ID number associated with it. So I have to submit that to the city. I have to pass this test, obviously. I have to get, uh, minimum level of insurance on my business to be able to practice. And then the most important thing, I have to give them money along with my application. At that point, they'll review it and decide whether or not I can be a general contractor. I know there are some places out there that have an experience requirement. So you may have to work under a general contractor for a specific amount of time. My area does not require that, but there are some out there. So again, know the requirements that you're getting into. Let's talk about the test at this point. You're going to have to get a couple of different books and there's two at least for mine that they recommended one was the concrete manual the 2015 concrete manual and the second one was the 2015 IRC now if you notice on here I've got a bunch of tabs along the top each one of these corresponds to the different chapters that are within it and then of course probably the two most important ones the table of contents and the index right here. Make sure that you know exactly where those are going to be. So what's gonna be on your test? Well, thankfully the ICC website tells me it gets a breakdown based on the classification of license that you're going for. So if we're looking at a class A, it's gonna be 90 multiple choice questions, open book, four hour test time, and it's gonna be broken down just like this shows, 15% is admin, 25% is building planning and safety, 45% structural systems, 15% building envelope. If we go for a class B, you know, it's got everything lined out. For my class C, it's a 80 question test, multiple choice, four hour time limit, and it goes over footings, foundations, and crawl spaces, building planning, masonry, floors, walls, roofs, fireplaces, plan reading, and administration. It gives you the percentages associated with that as well. So what you'll notice is that your book itself you know, if you're just studying this to pass the test, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of this book that you don't have to study. So anything to do with electrical, plumbing, and really a lot of the HVAC related stuff. There was some ventilation in my test whenever I took it, but like I said, you could basically skip those sections. You need to know them to be able to build an actual house, but not necessarily to pass this test. That's the big takeaway here. So how do you study for this test? Well, number one, read the book. 
Seriously, just read the book. You know you're gonna be building something and hopefully you have in mind what that's going to be. So the best way to read this book is try to read it and correlate what you are reading to what you are going to build. That will make it stick in your head a heck of a lot easier. Now there's gonna be a lot of stuff in there that is not gonna correlate and it's not gonna stick as well. You know, whenever you're taking your test, you're gonna to have to know how to interpret exactly what that question is and where to find it within this book. So again, read the book, but also, again, make those tabs. It's kind of a nice thing to do. If you look around, there's gonna be a lot of websites out there that tell you how to tab everything. And you know, that it's not that important. Having the index tab, the table of contents tab, and then knowing the different sections, that's about all you need to do. You don't need to buy that, just tab it on your own. But the big thing that you need to do, if you can, is work questions, work practice tests. The more practice tests that you do, the better off you're gonna be. The more you know how to interpret that question that you are reading and apply it to the code. That's the big thing. These questions that they ask you are gonna be kind of tricky. For example, they're gonna give you on some of these questions a background information, and then it's gonna have the test question itself. Well, sometimes the two of those are completely related. Sometimes they aren't. So it's easy to get a little confused whenever you are reading this question and they give you this background information and they don't actually correlate stuff you're gonna need to know. But if you can work as many problems ahead of time as you possibly can and time yourself while you do it, make sure you give yourself time constraints because you wanna make it feel like you're in that test situation. You're not gonna have forever to be able to take this test. So you got 80 questions, four hours to do it. I knew that I had to get 20 questions answered per hour. And not every question, whenever I took the test, was I able to find that exact answer in the book. So for a lot of those, I just check marked it and it came back to it later. And that left me, once I made it all the way to the end of the test, I had about eight questions that I was not quite sure on. So what do you do in that case? Well, it kind of comes all down to percentages. So if you have at least a basic understanding of what they're talking about, but you can't necessarily find it in this code book, a lot of times you can deduct a couple of those answers out of there. So just remember, if you have four questions and you're guessing you have a 25% chance of getting it correct. If you can knock one or two of those out of there, you double your chances of getting that right. Keep that in mind. It's okay to guess on those last questions, but try to make it an educated guess and absolutely do not leave it blank. Every single question needs to be filled out. If you leave a blank, you have 0% chance of getting that question right. A friend of mine has been a general contractor in a whole bunch of different states. So he's taken this test over and over and over again. And his biggest piece of advice is usually locally, there's going to be some sort of a class that you can attend for a general contracting license. And he recommends that you take that class. And the beauty of that is they're gonna have someone that just constantly goes in and takes those tests. They know the questions that are being answered, the way that they are asking those questions, and then of course, how to find them in the book. This isn't a memorization thing. This is figuring out how to interpret the question and find the answer in the book. That's all there is to it. Well, if you're wondering what I did to pass this test, well, I took this book, I spent one full day, I read the whole thing, and then I went the next day and I took this book and read through it. And it turns out that uh, there were zero questions on the test from this concrete manual. So I don't even know why I had to buy it. But since I'm a civil engineer, there's nothing new in this for me. However, it is a great book. If you don't know much about concrete or concrete construction, it's a great book, has tons of illustrations. I highly recommend it for someone that doesn't know a bunch about that stuff. But will it help you pass the class C test? Nope. And then I just winged it. I gave myself basically two days to study and then the next time to actually take the test. And I've heard statistics that say that 90% of the first timers taking this test fail it. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, 
it's a hard test. I'm not gonna lie to you. You're probably gonna take every single second that they give you, and you probably should. You know, you should take as much time as you can to verify in that book that you've actually found the correct answer. So thankfully, three days ago, I passed that test. At the moment, I'm trying to get an insurance agent to cover me for a general contracting uh, business, basically. I already have the entity in place, but I don't have the insurance on it to satisfy all of the governmental requirements for this. And then I just have to apply for it. If you guys would, let me know down in the comments if you have your general contracting license and was it hard, was it easy, you know, did you pass it the first time? I'm kind of interested to know, you know, that 90% figure seems exceptionally high as a failure rate for first timers, but I suppose if a person doesn't put in the time, it kind of makes sense. It's not an easy test. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. We have lots of videos on this new house build, so stick around.